and you can use a hello. Here's this use. Don't use your sweatshirt. <laughs> Happy Saturday, everybody. Saturday, whatever day it is. I don't even know what day it is anymore, except that it's Saturday. Hope everybody's having a good day today and enjoying. Hopefully there's some good weather wherever you are out there. There's really good weather here in San Diego, incredible weather. Um, and I've got dual cooking going on here. Let's turn you over this way. This is my little, my little son, Colton, making brownies, which I love to see, as long as he cleans up. Right, Colton? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He says, uh-huh. Okay. See, I have a hard time putting this in the right place so you guys can see the, sorry, see my cutting board. There you go. Okay. Hey, Janine. Did you get the ingredients? Hopefully you did. If not, you can watch this later. You gave me a thumbs up, so I guess that means a yes. Hey, Janice. Good to see you, too. See, I know you can't see this. I'll let you get it from over here. How are the brownies going, Colton? They looking good? <laughs> okay, that's better. All right, so on tap tonight is chicken coca bean. And I'm assuming coca bean means cooked in wine. I don't speak French. I'm from a little town in Iowa where the only language offered in my high school, I'm not kidding you, the only language was German. Mm -hmm. So that is not a very useful language in today's day and age, especially if you live in Southern California, but that is the language I know. That and a little pig Latin. You probably need to turn the heat off. Yeah. Okay, so let that cool and just keep mashing it and blending the, the he's making frosting for the brownies. So yeah, German is not, not the thing. So coca bean, bean, it's gotta be vino, uh, in, coke, cook. That's what I'm figuring. So chicken coca bean. This is a recipe that I've been making for years and the recipe, I think I originally found it in Bon Appetit, which is a magazine I used to subscribe to. And it's actually coca Riesling cooked in Riesling, but I don't drink Riesling, so there's never Riesling in the house, it's too sweet. I think the first time I made it, I did use Riesling, and it was very good, but now I just use whatever white wine I have in the house, and it's, it's very, very good. Um, super easy to make, well, I just didn't say super easy. Very simple ingredients, very basic, not hard. You basically brown the chicken, you remove the chicken, you deglaze the pan to get all the yummy juices up, you put in the vegetables, onion, garlic if you want, carrot, things like that and then you put in the the bean the vino the wine the broth put the chicken back in and basically cook it down and i use dark meat i use boneless thighs because i think that's the best to use you can use bone in thighs um, which just makes more work for when you're going to eat it because you have to take it the, the thigh off the bone so i just do boneless what time yeah so just let it sit now it's not going to have to cool if you're going to use it as frosting but that's good. And then just every now and then, yeah, just keep stirring because the butter has kind of separated. So just, but it's fine for now. Yeah, it'll be fine. Brownie emergency. All right, so let's get started. I am using my favorite pan, the Le Creuset, and now I can tell you how big it is. Actually, I can't because it doesn't say. It just says it's uh, made in France, so it's very appropriate for cooking chicken coca bean in a French container. Okay, here it is. It is a five quart Dutch oven, five quarts. And it's really the perfect size. This is what I made the, um, my sourdough bread in the other day, and, and it's amazing. So perfect size for making something braised. I do braised short ribs, beef short ribs in here as well. Really, really good. Okay, so I can send you this recipe. This is actually my typed up version of a couple different recipes that I kind of merged together over time. And I still don't follow it because there's some things in here that I don't do, but that's okay. There are actually a couple ways you can cook this. You can cook it on the stove top or you can cook it in the oven. I usually cook it on the stove top if I'm here. You can also cook it in an Instapot, but today I think I'm gonna cook it in the oven because I'm gonna go in the spa and it's just safer in the oven. Okay, so first things first, preheat your oven to 350 and ours is already preheated because Colton's making brownies for dessert for everyone, right? No. No, he says no. And just, you know, your typical saute. I'm gonna use, um, oftentimes I will use ghee or butter, but this is already really rich because of the wine and the reduction in the wine, everything absorbing it. So I'm just gonna use olive oil and put a reasonable amount there. The Le Creuset 
is it coated an enamel? I don't know if this is porcelain or what it is, but it's basically nonstick. So you don't have to worry about that so much, but we're gonna be putting the chicken in there. And you know, chicken's kind of, chicken's, raw chicken is kind of gross to deal with. So be careful when you're doing that. You wanna be sure to clean everything really well because you know, the juices from raw chicken, no bueno. Okay, so this is two Costco boneless thighs come in a three pack. This is two three packs. No idea what the size is. Let's see, it might still be on here. Nope, it's not on here. But the recipe calls for five, four pounds. Just do whatever you wanna do. It makes great leftovers, but here's a boneless, skinless thigh. I'm gonna just put these in here and you're gonna saute them in salt and pepper. Kind of a medium heat, probably not too low. And you're gonna brown them all. So you might have to do it in batches depending on how big your pan is or how much chicken you're putting in there. Lots of times I just throw it all in there and deal with it because who cares? Especially for a braised product. You know, if I'm making something like a salt and baca, which I love, I'll make that for you sometime, or a marsala, or a, um, a uh, what's the one with lemon and capers? Why am I spacing on that? It starts with a P. Piccata, piccata. Or a piccata, then it's a little more, it's, it's more important because you want that a little more browned. Hey, watch out for chicken. Hey, so I just threw all of that in here. And then you're gonna want salt and pepper. I use um, pink Himalayan sea salt. This is actually not the container. I bought a really big one and I keep putting it in this just plain old sea salt when I have. But pink Himalayan sea salt is my favorite. It's got really good minerals in it. It's fairly, it's one of the more natural salts. Um, iodized salt, I don't use. Um, I'm sure I get enough iodine in my diet by just eating very little processed food, which I do. But the pink Himalayan sea salt, and Kirkland does sell a pink Himalayan sea salt. So sea salt, you can bake with this. You can do everything like you do normal salt. And then pepper, fresh ground, or you can just do it the other way. I have both. I'll do a little of each so you can see. But basically lots of pepper, not too much salt, because this is gonna have some chicken broth in it, and chicken broth has salt in it as well. And you never wanna put too much salt in because it's such an easy thing to add, and if you put too much salt in, you've ruined your meal. So be really careful on the salt in, in really everything you do. Plus it's not good for you. Okay, so basically you're just gonna brown this until it doesn't have to be fully cooked because it's going to braise for like 45 minutes to an hour but just browning it and getting some of the flavors from that chicken into the sauce is what your objective is here and then you're going to take this chicken out and then we're going to put the onions in so while that's browning i'm going to move on to the onions or onion one large onion should do it and here we go be careful. You can cut your onion in a Cuisinart if you want. If I'm making like a big pot of chili or something, sometimes I'll use the Cuisinart, but usually I just, I just do it myself. And you can make it whatever size you want. This recipe actually calls for removing all the vegetables, straining the sauce and, and reducing it and making it a true sauce, but I don't do that. I like all the, the vegetables in there. I like the pieces of onion and the carrots and everything. So that's what I do. That's one of the things that I change in the recipe. So just chop that onion. Not too big, not too small. It doesn't have to be minced by any means. We're not gonna put this in right now. We're gonna put this in after the It's hard now. It'll be fine. You can always reheat it. That's the beauty with chocolate. Yeah, I think that recipe you had is wrong. But we'll deal with that. Once that's out of the oven, honey, then we can re-soften that and put it on and then make it hard, basically. But there's no need to do it now because your brownies aren't ready. So you're just gonna make it, you're gonna burn it, okay. I love that they like to cook. It's usually mac and cheese, ramen noodles, or brownies, things like that. But hey, it's something, right? Okay, so don't forget about your chicken while you're doing it. Ow, that's hot. Okay, don't leave the tongs 
in the pot. Unless you want to burn your hand. I burn my hands all the time. I get all these burn marks, rich it into the oven, grabbing things without thinking. But it's okay. So I bet a lot of you are doing a lot of cooking now at your home. And now it's cool. Home and a lot of takeout. We have not done any takeout except for yesterday. My friend Esther, who lives right up the street, she has a pizza business. She's got like a big brick oven and she put asked everybody to put in orders and I picked up three pizzas for, for dinner last night. Really, really good. She's an amazing cook. Honey, there's really no reason to do that now because you're just going to have to do it again. Pizza's almost done. I mean, the... Um, yeah, but it's going to be too hot and you don't put the frosting on when it's hot. Trust me. Okay, I think we need a little more pepper. Hard to overdo the pepper. I mean, you can't overdo it. Like if you took this and threw it in the wrong way with the big thing and, and you put too much pepper, you would actually ruin it. But it's hard to grind too much pepper into it. So keep letting that brown. That's your onion. You can also put garlic in here. I've done that before. I'm just not doing it today. I'm done cleaning. You are done except cleaning? For except for that thing. Okay. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Colton. So one of the other things I always talk about when I'm cooking, because I love to eat, is exercise. Because if you don't get exercise, it's not good for you. And the more exercise you get, the more you can eat and drink. So that's part of why I like to exercise, but really it is truly my therapy. I need it. I need to get out. I need to sweat. I need to have some kind of a physical exertion. I need to have an outlet. And that's just part of who I am. It's part of who I've always been and probably will be part of who I always will be, I hope. I can't imagine that I'll stop doing that. So today's exercise, and I exercise almost every day unless I'm sick or it's like rainy or something like that. But even now, you know, you can do a lot of stuff inside. Um, especially now, a lot of trainers in our gym, they're doing a lot of things online. So today I ran, jogged, I'm like a 10 minute mile type of runner these days. I ran um, just over three miles and then I walked about a half mile back to back up the hill in my house. It's just nice, put on your tunes, just get out there, see some people. A lot of people out there today, surprisingly, but it was great. Okay, this is making some really good, smells great. It's making some really nice juices from the chicken and everything melting in here and the pepper smells great. I'm gonna give that just a few more minutes and then I'm gonna add the onion. And with regard to the carrots, this original recipe didn't call, call for it, but they taste so good when they're braised in there with all those flavors. Basically the flavors are onion, the wine, the only spices I put in there besides pepper, thyme, and tarragon. The tarragon, it calls for at the end, but the thyme, it will, will be braised in there with the thyme. It's just such simple, really nice flavor. Okay, take the chicken out. You can see. You don't have to cook this all the way through. Some of this is still pink, but that's totally fine because this is gonna cook thoroughly while you're braising it on the stove top or in the oven or in the Instapot if that's what you choose to do. I don't like to make this in the Instapot. I like the Instapot for things. In fact, I'm gonna be using it to make the, uh, the quinoa for the base. So this is gonna leave a little particle of chicken in there still, which is fine and make sure the fire's still on, and then put the onion in there. And you're gonna saute, brown the onion a little bit. It's not gonna caramelize a lot because there's some broth in here from the chicken, natural broth, but just get it cooking up a little bit. And you can put the carrots in now too if you want. I'm gonna wait a minute or two for the carrots. Get another spoon. I'll check on the brownies. And you can you can put 
more than one onion too. It depends. I probably could put one more one more onion in here, but oh, they look really nice. Ooh, let me see. No. Oh yeah, I don't think they're quite done. Yeah, you know, and you know how to tell when they're done, right? You how? take them out and oh, yeah, put a um in the middle, and if any of it stays on there, it's not done. You want to put it back in there. Okay. Okay. So, but and be sure to use the hot pads because you'll be like, oh, don't put it in your teeth. That's gross. Now you're gonna have to use a different one. I got the stuff out though. Well, you can get the stuff out, but that's what flossing is for. Here, put this in here. Use this one now. Oh, I call it though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oral care is a big thing in this household. I brush my teeth twice a day. What are you twice a week now? What? <laughs> Kidding. Sort of. Okay. I'm gonna put the carrots in now. So this is just onion and carrots. We're gonna let that go for a little bit. Let's see, I guess I could read the directions. I've made this so many times, I don't, I don't even usually get this thing out. All right, preheat oven to 300. Season chicken with salt and pepper in a large enameled cast iron casserole. Okay, so that's what this is. It's enameled cast iron casserole. Cool. Seriously. Okay, remove chicken. Heat oil, saute vegetables. The vegetables are onion, carrot, and celery. I do not put celery in here. I don't like cooked celery. I love raw celery. I love celery juice. I love celery just in its natural form, but I do not like celery in, um, I like it in jambalaya. Or uh, what's the other one? Jambalaya and, anyway, I like it in that, the New Orleans thing that I make, but I don't like it in soups and stuff. It just gets kind of soggy and icky. But if you're using that, that's what you're putting in now. And shallots, so this calls for two medium shallots. I don't have shallots. If I did, I would put them in. Shallots add um, uh, more depth to this. It's more of a um, oniony flavor. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but Colton's playing drums. Colton is not really aware that there are other people in the world. It's okay, as long as you can't hear it too badly. <laughs> Okay, so put this in there. It's looking really good. It smells really good. Okay, I was reading this right. Uh, add until the lightly brown the vegetables. Add the wine and simmer one minute. Okay, so the wine, this is starting to stick a little bit, not in a bad way, but the wine is to deglaze the pan basically. Get all those yummy parts from the chicken into the sauce. The recipe calls for one and a half cups of wine. I always put more than that. Sometimes I'll put a whole bottle, but right now I have a little bit of wine left from something else I made. Can't get this open. Something else I made recently. Okay, don't do this. That's what I do. I do all kinds of things with my teeth I shouldn't do, but that's what I do. Okay. So I am just gonna pour all of this in here. Um, this is a 750, this is about who knows? Maybe three cups. But it just tastes so good. It's not like the alcohol is going to stay in there. It's all going to cook off. It smells good though. And it also calls for some broth. So I'm going to put, I'm going to start with, I have a lot more chicken than four pounds, I think. So I'm going to add more broth initially. Because again, you can always boil it down later. I'm getting my chicken stock. And if you've watched any of my other cooking things, I use this better than bouillon. It's an organic chicken base that's concentrated, and all you do is you can either just throw it in a soup, or that's what it looks like, or you can throw it into water and cook it, whatever you want. But basically it's like the bouillon cubes that my mom used to use these bouillon cubes, little cubes, super, super salty, and I would just like eat them. Oh, so gross. 15 seconds left. 15 seconds! Um, just be careful. So I'm gonna put about, I don't know, that's probably enough for three or four cups. But this is really useful and handy versus those Tetra Packs. It takes up a lot less space. It does need to be refrigerated once you have, wait mom, once you've um, opened it. Yeah. So if stuff comes out of when I yeah, take it, it back out, right that means it's not middle. done? Does that mean it's not done? Yeah, put it in the middle. There, it's done. It's done? Yeah. Yay! Does it look like it's done? Does it look like it's still a little liquidy in the middle? No, I think it's done. Okay, I think it's done too. Wait, so if nothing comes out, that means it's done? Okay. Basically, but remember, those are brownies, so here, put them over here. You shouldn't put them I'm right gonna on cut it. them. No, 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 they need to cool it. You oh. need to cool it and frost it and then cut it. 
So you're getting a little brownie recipe here too. You get a, you get a twofer. Okay, now no, should we do this? No, no. Let this, no. Let this, yeah, you can do that. And then you can put it on here and then cool it. But you do not want to cut that until it's fully cooled. He made brownies last week and um, mm -hmm. he didn't think they were they were done. And I'm like, just let it sit, let it sit. Cause it'll, you know, it'll melt and solidify. And he didn't, he just started eating them. And they were good. I mean, it's his brownies, so whatever. So I'm just gonna put this in here too. And then we're gonna add the chicken back in. Okay, chicken. And then when you add the chicken back in, Add all the yummy juices that have rendered off the chicken as well. Just place all of that in here. You can really smell the wine. It smells great. You can still keep cooking it if you want. And like I said, you can continue to just cook this on the stove top. I am going to cook it in the oven tonight, just for fun. Oftentimes I just do it on the stove top if I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so just all the rest of those juices put in there, then cover this chicken up. It should, should be mostly covered, and that's why I err on the side of more liquid than it calls for. The recipe calls for one and a half cups of wine and one and a half cups of broth, but I really like the liquid. And then once you're once it's cooked, you take the chicken out, you, you boil down and reduce the broth, and then you add some tarragon and add um, some cream if you want. Okay, the thyme. I did not put the time in yet. I don't think I'd even call for it yet. But I'm gonna put the time in now. It calls for to taste. Very helpful. I'm gonna put about a, a teaspoon and a half. We'll start with that. Oh, I think it's beginning better. Okay. Yeah, just so it gets liquid. Oh yeah, look at it. Perfect. I think it needs a little more. Yeah, just a little more. And then literally you can just pour that on there because it's just butter and there. chocolate. Yep. And then you need to let it cool. I mean, cook. I mean, cool. Cool, cook. Single syllable words that start with C. And have two O's in the middle. Hmm. Okay, there we go. So let me just read what this says for you. So if you want, if you're more of a follower of recipes, Heat remaining oil, put the vegetables in, add the wine, add the chicken broth, the thyme, and boil. I'm not going to boil, but you can boil. Okay, next it says remove, oh yeah, it says cover and braise in the hour for one minute until tender. Um, if you're using breast meat, you're not going to want to braise it. It's going to get too overdone. If you're going to use breast meat, do what we did. Don't put it back in yet. Keep it out, boil down the, the liquids, put less liquid in, and then re-add the chicken if you're using white meat. White meat is, you're not gonna be able to braise a white meat like you are a dark meat because it's just, it's gonna be really dry. I, I've done that before and it still tastes really good. It's just not gonna have the same, same flavor and everything. Okay. Is this done, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now let that solidify just a little bit. And then literally I would just pour that on here and then it's gonna have to cool for quite some time. Okay, let me see if you guys can show you this. Okay, well let's look at, well not that way, let's look at Colton's brownies while we're at it. I can help you just pour that on, but let's let it cool just a little more, okay? No, cause it's gonna harden. It won't, just give it a second. Hey, we're gonna need that spoon. It's not usually quite this chaotic. Okay, here is the chicken. You see that? The chicken coca bean. So it's the broth, the wine, the onions, the carrots, the chicken, the thyme, a little tiny bit of salt, and pepper. So super simple. Now when we're done, I'll tell you once I get this in the oven what we're gonna do to it after that. Oops, rotate your phone. Sorry phone, sorry people. Okay, there you go. By the way, I'm going in the spa later, that's why I'm in my swimsuit. It's been one of those days. Okay, lid on. I'm gonna put it in. Um, it's really hot. Don't, don't, just let me, let me help you in a second, okay? I need these for a second. Because this too is hot. So I'm gonna put this in an oven at 350. It says an hour, I'm gonna set it for 45 minutes. Because I'm a rebel.
getting hard again. So I'll talk to you in just a second. Okay. Uh, we're taking a break to help my son. Okay. Don't. Uh, I'll drip put it in there for now. I know, but you drip chocolate on the floor. Okay, you might as well watch this. I got it. Okay, just pouring this frosting. So this didn't work like it was supposed to, but I think this is going to work. So get that spatula. The, the red yeah, yeah. One? The red one, and I then. I cleaned it. Can I just use this spoon? Okay. Okay, right. scrape it out. No, 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 scrape it out of here. There you go. Okay, I'll spread. So I think this is gonna work. He was following a recipe from his phone and it was not working. So I said, heat it up. Let's see if it all melds in there and, and it did. So it's gonna just, you're gonna just let it cool. Probably for at least a half an hour. And that chocolate on top, the frosting should should harden. Let's you go. Let me get it on like the corner. Yeah. So here's what you do. Like you're painting. Just go this way and this way. Just go like this is a paintbrush. Just push it from the middle to the oh, side. Oh, you're, you're pulling some of the brownie out. It's all right. It's all gonna be eaten by the same melt, right? Yeah. And hopefully you'll share with us a little bit. Mostly it's yours. Okay. See how you do that? Mm-hmm. And it's all um, liquidy, so it's super easy to spread. There we go. And there you go. Okay, now just wait. Yep, now you just wait and don't touch it. Okay, so that's that. That's in the oven. I set it for 45 minutes. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn you this way so you can see over here a little bit. I'm going to make the grains with it. This is a combination of ancient grains and quinoa and uh, red rice, oats, barley, wheat berries. It's really good. Um, let's see who makes this. Now quinoa. I don't know. Now with quinoa? No, medley. I don't even see a brand on here. How weird is that? But that's what it is. And I buy it at Costco. I'm going to do this in the Instapot because the Instapot seems to make rice and grains really, really, really well. And you can get it made and it just sits there. So it's not like it's gonna get sticky or get cold. It's gonna stay warm. It's like a rice cooker, but way faster and way better. And if you haven't used an Instant Pot, they're pretty cool. I highly recommend them. I guess uh, they used to be dangerous. Like they would sometimes explode and kill people. That doesn't sound like a good idea, but Mine has never exploded or killed anybody as far as I know. So you just follow the directions on the package basically. I think it's a one to one and a half ratio. One cup of uh, dry, it's one to two ratio. I'm not gonna quite do that because I hate it when it gets really soft. I'm gonna do about one to one and a half. So I'm only gonna put a cup of quinoa in here because we still have some left over. And then about a cup and a half of water. Maybe a little bit more. Because I don't like it dry either. Though. Okay. And usually it's salt and pepper, but I think it's just easier to use a little of this. So that's what I usually do for when I do rice, and especially like a quinoa type rice. Just a little bit of that. And again, this is the chicken base concentrate, organic, and it's just going to give it a nice flavor and give it more protein. It's already got protein with the quinoa, and you know, we get a lot more protein than we think. Everybody's like, protein, protein, protein. How can you go meatless? Well, there's protein in a lot of things we eat. There's protein in some greens. There's protein in quinoa. You don't really have to eat meat. You don't have to eat meat to get protein. Okay, so you just put that in there, just like you're making it on the stove, but you don't have to man monitor it, and it's not going to get all sticky and ruin your pans. There's the Instapot. tricky to get the hang of it, but once you do, it's a piece of cake. I'll just bring you with me. So this is my Instapot. It's the Instapot brand. You can buy them on Amazon. That's what I did. There's different sizes. I was telling um, last time I did, did something with the Instapot, I've made a cheesecake in here and it was incredible. But basically, we're just going to press um, clear manual and it, it automatically sets to 30 minutes. This is already on high pressure. 
and I'm going to set it to 10 minutes. 10 minutes, it'll start automatically. You want to make sure that this is closed. This is the vent and that's what it's going to start venting and then it'll seal naturally and then I'll just let it naturally release when it's done. So that will be ready in about 13 minutes probably. Not that the food, the uh, regular, whatever I'm making, coca bean is not going to be ready that soon, but that's okay. Hey Lori. Yes, I use it better than bouillon. Yeah, isn't it great? It's better than bouillon. And they also have a beef version too. Am I still there? I am still there. You're still there. We're all still there and happy. Um, I'm, I, I'm not very good at this, you know. Clearly, I'm not a professional. And I'm probably a little upside down now, but whatever. Okay, so that gives you a little time to do whatever. I already made a salad, but I serve this with a salad. You could serve it with anything. You can serve it with roasted asparagus, Brussels sprouts, any kind of vegetable. You want a vegetable. I like salad because it's a nice contrast, a fresh, cold, kind of crispy thing versus a roasted vegetable, which is kind of what this is. Um, so I think it's a perfect contrast, having a nice salad as a side for the veggies. There are veggies in here, obviously, but it's just a, it's a really good contrast in my opinion. Okay, so that's gonna take a little while, that's gonna take a little while, and let me tell you what's gonna happen later, because I don't think I'm gonna keep you on here for 40 minutes. I, I, uh, I mean, I could try to entertain you with some exercises or some singing, but I'd probably lose every single one of you. <laughs> I, I break into song quite a bit. I've been really good on this, this live. I haven't even sung at all. Just give me, give me a chance, I might. I'm not liking what I've got on there right now. I made a new playlist today for um, on my YouTube. I was playing around with YouTube today, and there's some really good songs on there. So all of these live cooking escapades that I'm doing, I'm putting on my YouTube channel because it's too hard to find them on Facebook. You have to scroll through and you see all these comments and it's kind of a pain. So I put them in a new playlist on my YouTube and it's called Cooking and Cocktails. So if you want to refer to them, just go there. And go check out my music. There's a great playlist. It's a lot of old stuff from kind of late high school, college, law school, and kind of around that time, and mid 80s to um, mid 90s. There's some more um, contemporary stuff under there too, but it's mostly like the stuff I'm, I'm just, you know, the, the annals of my brain and music. For some reason, they come out every now and then, and I get waves of old music back in my life, which I love because it brings back all these awesome memories and music for me is essential. I was thinking the other day, why, I don't know, because I have a lot of time on my hands now. Um, if I had a choice to give up alcohol or music, I could only keep one of those, I would totally keep music. And I like to drink. And I'm going to open up some wine here in just a second. But I'm sure probably everybody would do that, right? Um, but I do like my margaritas and I like my lemon coconuts coconut drops and I like my um, my wine and champagne. I don't drink a lot of beer, I like beer, but but yeah, I would, music is like one of life's great things. And, and yeah, you could sing and make your own music, but it would not be the same. So that would be one of the last things in life I would give up. Um, relationships, obviously I wouldn't give up those, that would be the number one thing. But I don't know, I've been thinking about weird things like that. Anyway, I digress. I lose my focus every now and then. Okay, so what we're gonna do when that is done is we are going to take that out, remove the chicken, and reduce the sauce a little bit. Again, I like the sauce, so I don't strain it. It says to strain it, completely strain it, and it says to um, reduce it, which is fine, but I just think you'll find, like I did, the sauce is so good, why would you wanna get rid of any of that sauce? Just utilize it. So that's what you're supposed to do. Um, meanwhile, I'm gonna do this too. And when the chicken is done, remove the chicken, strain the braising liquid, get everything out of there and put it back in and reduce it to one and a half cups. That is not enough. Trust me, that is not enough. Um, then you whisk in the cream. It calls for either cream or creme fraiche. I use sour cream most of the time because I have it on hand. I usually have cream on hand, but I, I have not used cream. Sour cream gives it a nice kind of bite to it. So you put a little cream in there and then you put a little lemon juice and adjust the seasonings with salt and pepper, and then you put the tarragon in there. And it's just so delicious. You put the chicken back, obviously, and put it all back together. Now, what I do with the chicken is I kind of, you can take it out and chop it if you want. Usually I braise it enough where you literally can kind of pull it apart. 
and or you can leave it whole if you want um, it's very tender but I like it more in like a stew kind of that's so that's what I do to it okay now it also comes from mushrooms and I'm gonna do this because I love mushrooms and my kids don't so I don't put the mushrooms in I just put them on the side but they're so good with this that I highly recommend if you are a mushroom fan don't skip that step so I use a cast iron when I do mushrooms Cast iron is great. Can you hear that? Sizzling a little bit. I draw the line at Boy George, not gonna sing that. So, mushrooms, butter or ghee. I would not use oil, I use butter or ghee. Lori, if you're on, you're vegan, so you're not gonna wanna use butter or ghee, so you're gonna use olive oil. But I am going to use grass fed butter. I wouldn't use any other butter than grass-fed butter. Grass-fed butter is better for you. It's more natural. The cows eat grass like they should be, not grains, and it's amazing. Okay, so I've got the mushrooms here. I'm gonna slice those up and just throw them in here. And this is really just mushroom salt and pepper, just sauteed mushrooms, and they're gonna go, it's gonna go in the coca bean later. So you don't have to do this right now, but since we're sitting here, let's just do it right now. Slice up a bunch of mushrooms. However you like. I, I usually make big and little slices. Sometimes I quarter them for more texture. You might want to see that. Although you probably can't see it because I don't have it far enough back. I don't think I do. On the cars, I could sing some cars. Best friends girl. Turn it up a little bit. I just got to find the right audio balance so it's not too loud for you, but I can still hear it. So I'm like standing with my legs spread apart so I'm a little shorter. Actually, this is Let's Go, not my best friend's girl. I love the cars. It's really sad when Rick Ocasek died. So I'd be curious what all of you are making in our shelter in place time. Are you doing your go-tos? Are you trying new things? Obviously, we're not going to the store a lot, so trying new things is a little more of a challenge because it's probably things you don't have on hand. I have often a lot of stuff on hand. Like, I always have garlic. I always have onions. I pretty much always have ground beef, organic ground beef, um, lots of beans, lots of you know, chicken base, things like that. Um, so I can make a lot of things, but if I were going to do something new, or unique or super fancy, I'd probably need something for the store and I really don't want to go to the store. I went to Costco last week to get some things and it was fine. I went in the afternoon, but I haven't been to the grocery store in ages and I won't need to go to Costco for quite some time. And they say that these next couple weeks, here in Southern California at least, are going to be, up. so, you know, this is going to be on YouTube, but right now it's March what is it? March 28th, maybe? We're right in the height of the coronavirus um, quarantine, for lack of a better word. But what I've been reading is a lot of doctors think that these next two weeks are going to be really critical and a big shedding period in terms of the virus um, being transmittable to others. So don't get too comfortable. Just keep staying alone and staying with your family and just deal. You know, keep your six feet apart. Be sure to wash your hands a lot. Use your hand sanitizer, etc. I'm still going out every day. I'm going for runs and bike rides and walks and stuff like that. But I'm not not socializing, which is a bummer. I'm socializing, socializing on Facebook. <laughs> um, just a little bit of salt. You know, you just don't need much salt in your life. <laughs> then lots of fresh ground pepper. You need a lot of pepper in your life. And you can cook these babies for a long time. Just depends how you like your mushrooms. When I make them for steak, every time I make steak, I pretty much make sauteed mushrooms. I cook them down a lot and then I put in sherry. It just gives it a wonderful flavor. This, I'm not gonna do that because we're gonna have plenty of flavor with the coca bean already. And I love using the cast iron. So one thing about a cast iron, I'm sure some of you use cast irons, they're great. 
you never use soap when you wash a cast iron skillet. And you naturally season this with um, oil or butter, and it's naturally non-stick if you take care of it properly. So you don't use soap, you use hot water, and you can use something scrubby to get anything off of there, and really hot water, and then you dry it immediately because it can actually rust. You dry it immediately and then put it away. And I put oil on it again, olive oil, and rub it all in there on the sides, and then I cover it with a paper towel because there might be a little residual oil on there that you don't want to get on your other pans. But cast iron is amazing, amazing, amazing. I love it. And they say that the iron from the skillet actually comes into your food, which is good because a lot of us need iron. Hey, Nick Lowe, cool to be kind. This is a blast from the past. When I ask you to explain, you say you gotta be cruel to be kind, which you don't have to be cruel to be kind. I mean, what the heck song is this? Cool to be kind in the right measure, baby. You gotta be cruel to be kind. Little tip, little, little pitchy dog. But really, you gotta be cruel to be kind? It's like, hurts so good. I kind of get that one, but cruel to be kind, I don't get it. Okay, that's going. I think that I will take my friend John's suggestion when he saw that I was going to make this and have some wine. When I ask you to deny, you say. So I know John from my old days working with Jack Daniels. I represented them for almost 20 years in their licensing program, building their licensing program. And awesome brand, one of my favorite brands of all times, Jack Daniels. I don't know if you can see my cutting board, but it's a Jack Daniels cutting board from, from an awesome licensee that, that I um, found for them. And we built their barbecued meats program. Ready to eat meats, pulled chicken, pulled pork, um, brisket, ribs, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, great brand. I love representing them and working with them. Great company, Brown Foreman. Um, if you're not plugged into them, find them on LinkedIn and find them on Facebook. They have been giving back so much to the, they always do, but particularly now when we're in a time of crisis, they're helping with hand sanitizer. They're giving flat out money. They're really doing their part as a great ethical company that cares about people and not just their employees, but people in general and the economy, and they're helping out and they're giving back, which I love about them. I just have nothing but good things to say about Brown Foreman and Jack Daniels and Sonoma Couture. So Brown Foreman is the parent company. It's a public company. They own Jack Daniels, which is their biggest brand. They own Finlandia Vodka, which I love. They used to own a bunch of wines, but they've pared down to, I think, just a couple, Sonoma Couture being one of them. Sonoma Couture is up in Sonoma County. Amazing white wines and amazing Pinot Noir. This is a really old bottle. I hope it's good. Um, anyway, John saw I was doing a cooking thing and he said I should have some Sonoma Couture. And I said, you know what, that's good. I think I do have a, a bottle of Sonoma Couture. All right, so that did not work, but I have a special, the, the cork is, has issues. I have a special little hack. We're gonna use my hack. I didn't plan on doing this hack, but we're going to do this hack. And I can do it because I have everything I need, including a mesh strainer. Okay, so the cork got stuck in here. I'm going to just push it all the way through. This happens sometimes with wine that I've had for a long time. You know, the wine gets really good. This is a 2000. This is kind of pushing it for a white wine. But we're going to, we're going to salvage this. Just think about what I'm going to salvage this into. What kind of large glass bottle that I put this in? All right, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wash this out from the chicken broth and we're gonna use this. Very sexy decanter. It is not a sexy decanter, I'm just kidding. Okay. You get to watch the magic of the cork the wine with the cork in it. All right, I'm gonna back you up a little bit.
strainer so we don't get any of the cork. There you go. The cork is in the strainer safely. It's probably fine now to leave that in there. Nope, there's a big, big cork in there. So while I do prefer to pour myself a glass of wine from a bottle, sometimes you can't do that. So here's the tricky part. At the end, the cork gets there, but if you have a chopstick handy, because why wouldn't you have a chopstick handy? I moved, I redid my kitchen recently, so my chopstick, my handy chopstick is not where my handy chopstick should be. But I found an alternative, a skewer. I got lots of stuff in my kitchen. Okay, so we're gonna put the skewer in here to keep that cork from coming down. There, I got the rest of the wine, very good. I saved it. See how beautiful the color that is? It's a really good wine. I'm getting my wine glass. I really, I don't want to do stemless, but I don't want to walk out and get a stem. I prefer stemmed. Stemless is great for, look at this, isn't this sexy? Pouring myself a great glass of Chardonnay out of Pyrex. Ooh, that's a big glass. Hey, you gotta make do, okay. Smells great. This is a delicious, rich, buttery wine. Lafayette. That's good. Mm, that's really good. That's ready. So Sonoma Couture is one of Brown Foreman's brands. This is Lafayette Vintage 2000. I think the Lafayette is their highest level Chardonnay. Anyway, it's really good. It's really good. And it'll probably get even better. Not so much like a red wine where you really have to decant it and let it sit because this is a Chardonnay. But do you see how um, the color of that is just so yellowy and rich and buttery? I'm going to save the rest of it. Well, I'm going to drink this glass, but Patrick's not a big white wine drinker. I'm not really either unless it's sparkling wine. One of my favorite champagne, except I like sparkling wine better. The difference being it's not from the Champagne region in France. It's from every other region that makes something sparkly. Those French are very particular about using their trademarks, which I understand because I am a trademark attorney. Mm. Okay, so this beef, this is done. The quinoa, the, uh, the grains are done. A few things you can do. You can let it naturally release, which will just, it'll release the pressure on its own takes usually about eight, 10 minutes, which that's what I'm gonna do. You can do a quick release, which is kind of scary because you have to go and move that knob where all the, the, the pressure of the gases, not gas, but you know what I mean, the steam. And that's like, and it just steam goes everywhere. I, that's kind of scary. I don't mess with that ever. And sometimes I'll let it natural release for a few minutes. If I'm in a hurry and I want it faster, then I'll quick release it. But we're just gonna let that natural release. Okay, these mushrooms look amazing. I'm going to bring you over here to see them. Beautiful, just in butter, salt, and pepper. So simple, yet so delicious. Um, amazing with the coca bean. Here's Colton's brownies. Doesn't that look good? Oh, yeah, it's perfect. Kind of hard on the frosting, but I like that. Tastes good. All right, so um, let's see what's going on in here. I've got 26 minutes left on the oven. And while I would really love to keep you guys here and maybe I'll just sit down and chat with you for a few minutes and we'll see what, what goes on. I'd like to see if you guys have any questions that I can answer. Janice, nice glass of wine. Yes, it is. So Janice, good friend of mine from law school, she's, she's on here. And I've got some other friends. Jen's supposed to be on here. Angela's on here, um, Deneen. And I know that Jen bought the food to make this, and I know Deneen bought the food. So Deneen and Jen, if we don't stay on so we can see the rest of this, I can hop back on and, and finish this with you guys, or even do it on Facebook Live again, and then just not post it, or whatever. Because that, that second step, I mean, I can certainly walk you through it, but it's, um, you probably want, you want some support. So anyway, Denise, I digress. Um, Denise and I went to law school together at at University of Iowa 
and we had a lot of fun. Actually, we became better friends after law school and have remained really good friends. She came out for the Holiday Bowl where we played and trounced USC. That was a fun game. I think that was uh, December 28th or something like that. A lot of fun. That game was a blast. It was just too much fun. But she was my champagne buddy, so she and I have always consumed, I should say, sparkling wine buddy, especially Schramsberg, our favorite. Blanc de Noir Schramsberg is my favorite. Their J. Schramm is phenomenal too, and their Reserve is phenomenal. Those are the high, top of the line ones. In fact, their J. Schramm sparkling wine has won blind taste tests against Dom Perignon. And I like Dom Perignon, but why would you spend that kind of money on Dom Perignon where you've got J. Schramm, which is not inexpensive, but it's one taste test against it. Even Veuve Clucquot is great. Even, um, you know, I've got some great sparkling wines that, that I drink that are around $15, $20 a bottle. So you don't have to spend a ton of money on a good sparkling wine. I'm not a huge fan of the um, Prosecco. It's a little sweet for me, but I do love the Schramsberg. They make a, a non-vintage called Mirabelle. And word on the street, the word on the street is that Trader Joe's private label is, oh, Patrick saying, save me some Coutrere. Okay, I'll save you some Coutrere right out of the Pyrex. We, we're really high class here. <laughs> He's golfing. He's been golfing a lot lately. I'll save him a little bit. He'll like this. He likes good wine. Derek, so after it comes out of the oven, take the chick, actually it's Jen, take the chicken out and reduce the sauce of it. Yes. Yeah, so what you're gonna do, oops, mushroom, mushroom on the loose. After it comes out of the oven, Take the chicken out, put it on the side. And like I said, if you want to cut that or kind of shred it into smaller pieces, I think it just absorbs that sauce better. It's already absorbed a ton of the sauce. But that's what you're gonna do. Take that out, put it on the stove, uh, reduce it a little bit, as much as you want. And then you can put the, well, let me get the recipe in case I'm missing something. I would put the tarragon in because I really like the tarragon. Um, thyme is your prominent spice here. Thyme as in T-H-Y-M-E, not time, 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 see what's become of you or me. When the chicken is done, I'll just read it. When the chicken is done, or as I say chicks, when the chicks is done, remove chick and strain the braising liquid. Don't strain the braising liquid. That's my best recommendation. No, you can leave it in. I only remove the carrots, but you can leave those in too. I leave those in now, this is a long time ago. Return the liquid to the braising pan and boil in, until it was, is reduced to one and a half cups. Don't do that, reduce it as much as you want, but don't, don't reduce it too much because you're gonna want that to absorb into the quinoa that you're serving on the side. Risk, whisk in the cream. Like I said, you could use cream, you can use sour cream, you can use creme fraiche, you don't have to use any of it. If you don't want dairy in there and don't want it to have a nice creamy flavor, don't do it. I, I like it. I like the way it tastes. I don't put much in. It calls for a half a cup of creme fraiche, which is kind of a lot. Creme fraiche is very, very uh, rich. Um, I'll probably use sour cream and I'll probably put a couple tablespoons in just to see. I'll mix that all in there and you can actually reduce it with that in there. You don't have to wait until it's reduced. Um, you can do either or. Uh, this says to wait till it's reduced. You might want to reduce it a little, try that and then see how it gets. You want it a little thicker. And then what you do is you add the tarragon in, you can add a little lemon. See, sour cream already has kind of that, that tinge to it, so you might not need as much lemon. But a little lemon juice in this weirdly makes a big difference. And you wouldn't think, why, why would I put lemon in that? It doesn't seem like it, but it's good. So that's what you do. Then you put the, the mushrooms, if you're not keeping them on the side for persnickety kids, Put the mushrooms and the chicken back in there and just let it all warm up and meld for maybe just a couple of minutes and it's ready to go. Um, I would scoop the, the quinoa right on your plate. You can even do this in a bowl if you want. And then put the chicken and the sauce right in there and it's just like, ah, so good. And then, you know, your salad, just have that however you want. Hey, Leslie, good to see you. I'm glad that you tried that. Here, my mushrooms are, are complaining at me. Okay, see, I was not paying too much attention, but see how this got kind of um, browned? That's okay. It's actually really good. Um, it gives great flavor. And again, this cast iron, see how it just comes up? No problem. So it's saying it wants more liquid, but I'm not gonna give it any more liquid, it's fine. It doesn't really need it because of what I'm gonna be doing with these mushrooms, putting them into the coca bean. 
I am going to turn it off. Voila. Let's go back to the wine. This is, this is the funnest part of it. Okay. So that's what you do, Derek and Deneen. Um, that's pretty much it. And then with this, you can, great leftovers. It makes awesome leftovers. I think it even gets better the next day. In fact, I'm starting to salivate thinking about this. It's so yummy. Um, you can also freeze it. You know, if you made a ton and you're not gonna be able to eat it within maybe two or three days, just freeze it and put it in a container and throw it in the, the, the freezer and then boom, you've got a ready-made meal. I do that with my soups a lot because I make a lot of soup, more than we would be able to consume. So Janine, you got that too? Good, so I love that you guys are cooking here with me. I wonder if I can bring you on. Hmm, is there a way to do that? Let's try. I'd love to have you part of this. More ways to go live now. I need to learn, there's gotta be a better way here. Hey Tammy, good to see you. I don't really see you, I just see your name, but. Let's see, Zoom, yeah, I know, Zoom, except I, I, I only have the Pro Zoom, the $15 a month one. I don't think I can Zoom directly to Facebook. If I can, then yes. That's what I'm thinking, that's where you bring people on. I, I love Zoom, I use Zoom all the time, but I really wanna Facebook Live this for a variety of reasons. But I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah, Zoom is awesome, Zoom is great. In fact, I bought stock in Zoom this past uh, these past few weeks and it has gone up significantly because of a variety of reasons, obvious reasons people are Zooming. Um, our kids are Zooming, it's just everything is, this is, I'm a self-employed person. I have been since 1998, self-employed work at home. So I've been using Zoom for years and now people that weren't working at home are working at home and now they're using Zoom. But there are some safeguards you have to take, take to implement because I guess some people are hi hacking into these Zoom calls and some ridiculous things are showing up on on school school sites, I won't get into those details, but uh, that's what I hear. But it's great. It's it's really useful um, just to get on as a family. It's it's way better than there's another one I used to use, Go Go to Webinar, and there's Skype, but that's kind of lame. Um, WhatsApp is great for just communicating back and forth and sharing files. That's an awesome app. I use that for my international clients quite a bit because um, it's it's better than texting. There are no fees with it. Um, anyway, so. I guess that's about it. I'd love to just sit here and chat with you all. I really would because I miss you all so much. I miss my friends and my family. I miss going to Tony's to call and having a couple margaritas. And while I can't complain, I'm not complaining. Um, we live in, in basically heaven here in San Diego. We have the best weather and sunshine and, and I've got a beautiful house and great food and I can cook and a great family. So I, I really cannot complain and I'm not complaining, but it is, um, it's still hard. It's hard not to, to be out of your normal routine and not being able to be social and with your friends. It's really, you know, I'm like stir crazy even though I have no reason to be stir crazy. I've been out all day. I was washing the car, I was running, I was doing stuff around the house, cleaning the house and it's just still, you just, there's a mindset where you're kind of trapped. So I get it. I get why people are going crazy and um, luckily I have my family here. I know there's some people out there, a friend of mine out there, maybe he's watching, maybe he's not. Um, you know, I think he's got his son there, here and there, but yeah, you can't go hang out with your friends because, you know, you're, you've got to keep that distance and nothing's open. So I feel for you people out there that especially are, um, are alone, more alone than, than somebody with a family of four here. That's got to be hard, especially for you introverts even. It's a little too much. So I, I, I'll stop droning on and on about this. But great to see you guys. Um, great to see you all, your names. And I'll go back through and look everything. And then if you have any questions, just put questions on the, on the Facebook Live and I'll answer your questions. So enjoy it. Please let me know how yours turned out. Take pictures and post them. I'd love to see them. And I'll do the same. And cheers to you. Have an awesome Saturday night. I think we're going to watch Invisible Man. Bye.